Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel Tomcat Stitchery. I'm Whitney and today I've got part one of my trouser sew along. Um, before I get started, I have people asking me all the time, um, this whole capsule that I'm working on right now, I'm feeling very led to red lipstick at the moment. I just love the way it looks with the different shades of blue, the white, and then the, the yellow, and I've got my pens on right now. Um, people always ask. So I am wearing pretty much in all these, and I'll talk about them in the other videos, but I'm wearing um, color 55. It's a uh, Yves Saint Laurent color, Rouge Pour Couture totally didn't pronounce that right, but it is, yeah, <laughs> and it's an Yves Saint Laurent um, color, so very hydrating. <laughs> anyway, so I want to get that out of the way, but this is part one of my pants sew along, and um, I am also wanted to kind of touch on a little bit pant fitting. I know pants fitting can be terrifying, um, and I, oh, here, hold on, I'm getting ahead of myself. This is the pattern we're doing. <laughs> Sorry. S8056, and I'll probably just pop a picture up here so you can see it. Um, and the reason I picked this one is because pants fitting can be quite daunting. There we go. There's a good a good segue into, into the video. Uh, pants fitting can be quite daunting, and I love the Simplicity Amazing Fit patterns. Now, I don't have... Um, pants are not really my... Um, the issue when I, even when I'm shopping for ready to wear, I've never really had a big issue in buying pants unless it's a high waisted pant because again, I have a thicker waist, especially in comparison to my hips. So that would definitely be an issue. But for years, I've been able to find, you know, not, not the low, low rise of the early 2000s, the Britney Spears era, but um, although I did wear those back then. But anyway, um, just things that sit like an inch below my waist. I have, I don't really have any major fitting issues. Um, now that being said, my upper body is a hot mess and I hardly buy anything other than knit and ready to wear, which is why sewing is such a wonderful thing. But I know that's not the case for everyone. I know a lot of people struggle with ready to wear pants and with pant fitting in, in general. I am going to um, talk a little bit about some, um, some resources for that because there is such a myriad of, um, little issues that can come up. And on that, I just want to say, perfect fit is not as wonderful as it sounds. You could drive yourself absolutely batty, tweaking and fine tuning every last bit of fit. And I am very much of the camp of, yes, you want it to fit nice. And I think that's very important, but know when to say when, you know, things don't have to fit you absolutely perfectly. If you were to go into a store and buy ready to wear, are those pants going to fit, fit you absolutely perfectly? No, <laughs> probably not. So with that in mind, as long as they're comfortable, um, and even ready to wear pants didn't fit me perfectly, but you know, as long as things are comfortable and as long as you feel like you look good in them and, um, you know, the fit, don't become obsessed with overfitting things because that can also cause a whole lot of issues in and of itself, you know. So that being said, I want to share with you some resources that I um, really like regarding regarding fit before we get into this video really quick. Um, okay, I have some books here that I really enjoy. But I also, there have been some fantastic things written in the blogger community. Heather Liu of Closet Case did a fantastic um, ebook on jeans, making jeans. And there's a whole big list of some common um, pant fitting issues with jeans and how to fix those on your pattern. Um, I think you have to pay for the ebook, but I will leave a link below to that. Um, and if I can find a blog post, she may have a blog post on pant fitting too. Anyway, phenomenal stuff. And this month is also pant month for Sew My Style. And Sew Altered Style has done a post on some pant fitting as well. So I will also link anything um, on pant fitting that they have already done down below as well. Now that being said, I do touch a little bit on fitting and these pants are literally made to fit as you go. Um, I, that's why I love these amazing fit patterns. They're just phenomenal. And I do talk about that in the video. But if you're needing more, um, especially things within the, the crotch curve or um, the rise, if you're having fitting issues in those areas. These are some of the books that I love. This book is by Sarah Veblen, and I'll put links to all of these down below. This is a book by Sarah Veblen, and I actually know Sarah in real life. <laughs> um, but 
this book is phenomenal, fitting for anything, but she has a whole back, the whole last part of the book is all on pant fitting and really does a phenomenal job of um, discussing different types of pants, how trousers are supposed to fit versus a cigarette pant and yada yada yada. Um, I highly recommend this book, so I will put a link to that below. This is fantastic. Sarah's also just really wonderful. Um, another one, I don't have, it's the Palmer Pletch. I have the Fit for Real People because, um, I don't own, they have a Pants, Pants for Real People, I think. I don't own that one, only because, again, pants aren't my nemesis <laughs> as much as other things. So I do own this book, and I love this book. Um, but if you're wanting to get, and they talk about pants a little bit, but if you're really wanting to get into, um, I think they do anyway. Maybe not. They may not talk about pants at all on this one. It doesn't matter. They do have a Pants for Real People book, though, and I will leave a link to that book down below. Um, but the Palmer Pletch books are just, as far as fitting, are really fantastic. And my friend Evelyn, and I do talk about her in this video um, with interfacing. She's my Palmer Pletch person and just a, a friend of mine. Um, and I think... You'll have to email her, but she had mentioned possibly if we have enough people that want to order the Palmer Pledge interface facing through her, that she might be able to do a little bit of a deal with us. So if you're interested, send her an email. I'm going to put it down below. Um, but she's also a trained Palmer Pledge fitter, the tissue fitting. She's a certified instructor on that. And last, if you are just super hard to fit in pants and you have a desire to know how to make a perfectly fitting pants sloper, for yourself. I am going to recommend, and I have recommended her hands down, but Susie Fur, and this is her book, that um, all of her classes on Blueprint or Craftsy, if you have a subscription there, I I cannot s say enough about Blueprint, and I have a, a, a subscription, and I've had a subscription since they've been available, and I also own a ton of classes from when they were just Craftsy. Her whole um, pattern drafting classes, all of them are just simply amazing. She is such a fantastic teacher. I mean, she owns a fashion school, but she is such a fantastic teacher. But this book is kind of the book that kind of goes into detail on those classes um, that she's teaching through. I mean, the book came before the classes, but she kind of teaches through this book a little bit on all those drafting classes on Blueprint. Highly recommend it, but she talks you through how to draft a pants sloper so you could literally just make your own pants pattern. Um, how to, and I think, I think she talks a little bit, not only how to make a pant, yeah, not only how to make a pant sloper, but also how to make a few different, like, um, yeah, like how to do a trouser sloper, how to do a jean sloper, how to do slacks, um, and then different variations, you know, how to do a boot cut pant, flare pant, pleated pant, culottes, overalls even, yoga pants, underwear even, panties, boy shorts, so... Anyway, this book is also phenomenal, so I will leave a link down to that below. And again, her classes on Blueprint are amazing. And there are, if you do have a subscription, there's some other pant fitting classes um, that are on there that are also really good. I've, I've taken pretty much all those. I got really obsessed with fitting there for a while. It's like absorbing everything I could. So anyway, those are the resources that I just wanted to talk about as far as fitting. And again, I do talk about it a little bit in the video, but if you need to go above and beyond, that's where I'm going to send you. So with that being said, this is part one of the Pants Sew Along, and tomorrow you will have part two. And you should have already seen the fly, zip fly tutorial, and that will, <coughs> excuse me, <laughs> need to be watched um, if you haven't watched it already, but definitely again in between this video and tomorrow's video, um, because that's your homework in between these two videos. So that is it. I hope you guys enjoy this. Uh, again, if you have any questions or comments, leave them down below. Um, hit that subscribe button if you haven't already because I have a whole bunch of more of tutorials um, that are coming up and also just a whole bunch of other fun sewing stuff, um, lookbooks and makes videos and stuff like that. So give it a thumbs up if you like it and I will see you tomorrow. Bye. Okay guys, ready for another sew along. This time we are going to be doing trousers. Sorry for the reflection. Simplicity 8056. These are one of their amazing fit pants. If you are new to pants sewing, trouser sewing, whatever, I highly, highly recommend. Um, it doesn't have to be necessarily this pant pattern, but any of the Simplicity amazing fit patterns. They are just chock full of information and 
Um, just the way they're drafted, uh, the instructions are all very much for the beginner and to help you get in an amazing fit. <laughs> it's very atypical, I feel like, of um, big four patterns because a lot of times their instructions can be rather sparse. So anyway, highly recommend this one. I apologize for the lighting in here as well. I couldn't get my studio lights out here to look good. So um, it's going to be a little yellowy here, but I didn't think it mattered. Okay, this is my fabric. Let's talk about what you're gonna need first. Um, this pattern calls for, oh, chino, denim, poplum, sateen, stretch wovens, twill, lightweight wool types. Um, so pretty much anything that you would think of um, for pants. I This is the second time that I'm making this pattern. I have chosen a stretch wool suiting. So anything that says um, like a stretch cotton, um, even like a stretch twill, uh, stretch denim, uh, anything that's stretch suiting would all work for this pattern. But this pattern also works for non-stretch fabrics as well, like a chino or a regular wool. Um, be careful with your wools though, that can get uh, itchy real quick. Again, this is a wool lycra blend, I believe. I can definitely smell the wool content when I press it. I did do a burn test. There is definitely um, man-made stuff in here because it did, um, it did melt. Uh, but that could just be the lycra content. So anyway, I, I have had this in my stash now for quite a while and I'm not entirely sure what's in it, but definitely wool and there is some lycra. So this is a stretch woven. Again, this is the second time I've made these pants. The first time um, I made them in a stretch cotton blend for Minerva Crafts and the most amazing fabric with a matching blazer. And you guys will be able to see that as soon as it goes live on the Minerva Crafts blog um, at the end of June, I believe. And I will share all the information, or some of the information on that suit, obviously you can read about it on their blog, um, but they have rights to that first, so be on the lookout for that. <laughs> but yeah, so you're gonna want a fabric. Um, if you're wanting to make this pant out of a stretch woven and a non-stretch woven, be warned, you will have to do different fit adjustments. So you may wanna trace off your pattern, or again, this pattern is literally made to fit as you go. It, this is just brilliant. So just be warned that if you're using um, a non-stretch versus a stretch, you're gonna have different alterations to make for that fit. Okay, let's talk about sizing. How to pick your size. Um, I had a lot of requests for fitting information um, in this video. I am going to hit on just some general ones when we're actually doing the based fitting. So we're gonna have most of the pants made before we even talk about fine tuning fit and that kind of thing. These patterns, um, these amazing fit patterns, they come in a slim, average, and curvy size range. I am making the size 14, and I picked my size based on my hip measurement. So, on the back of the pattern here, let's see. On the back, uh, size 14, I'm like right on the cusp. These patterns always cut off like at a 14 or 16 and I'm like right there. Come on, focus. Come on. Okay, sorry, that's not what I wanted to focus. So um, the hip, which is nine, it even tells you nine inches below the waist of 38, which is actually my hip measurement um, for a 14. Now simplicity sizing is different than McCall's Butterick and Vogue, so make sure you're looking at the size chart. Uh, they have really improved with ease with simplicity patterns, in my opinion. So, I picked that based on my hip size. Now, they have pieces for, like I said, slim, average, and curvy. The way you find this out, and they have perfect instructions right here, but you are going to tie something around your natural waist. So this is where you bend. Um, a lot of times this falls usually just right above your belly button, not always, um, but just kind of put your hands at your waist and where you bend from side to side. That's your natural waist. Tie a string, piece of elastic, something around your waist, and you're gonna measure from the center back, right, literally right along your crack until you get to the center of your crotch, which is a very awkward measurement to make. And make sure you're standing up straight. You may need someone to help you like hold it up here at the top while you pull it around through your legs. And then I just figure out where the center of my crotch is and pinch the tape there so that I can look at it once it's no longer in between my legs. Again, a very awkward measurement, but um, mine is 14 and a quarter, which actually puts me right here uh, for the slim for the 14. 
So yeah, you just want it to be close. It doesn't need to be perfect. And a lot of times you can tell, you know, you know that your body is curvy and so you'll probably just know to make the curvy. Or if pants, you normally really don't have an issue fitting pants ready to wear, average is probably for you. Um, so yes, so that is how we pick. I have very narrow hips, and so I kind of assumed that slim would be, and my butt's kind of is disappeared. So I kind of assumed this is where I would be, and it is. So this is what I have made, the 14, and I have chosen the slim. Okay, a lot of questions about, we're gonna go over here to the pattern, about grading between sizes. All right, so I have done a 14 all the way through. Um, my waist is actually puts me in a bigger size category but these pants sit one inch below your waist and because my body does not flare out one inch below my waist like a quote-unquote normal woman's body would I can usually just ignore my waist measurement and really I suggest with pants always go with your hip measurement it is so easy to let in and out your waist and I actually found this pattern has um, one inch seam allowances on the side seams. And then here it has on the center back seam, it starts off with a one inch seam allowance. And then when you get to this point, it goes back down to five eighths. You may want to mark this um, if you want to make sure that that's accurate. I, however, just sewed this back seam at five eighths of an inch because I needed just that little bit of this one inch up here, um, which I guess would be three quarters of an inch because three eighths on each side. So I just sewed this one at three um, or five eighths and actually found the fit to be spot on for me. I am sorry about my manicure. <laughs> I never have my nails done and actually did for over spring break. So anyway, one inch seam allowances, which is gonna come in super handy when we are basting. Now, a lot of you have asked about if you have um, a waist that is like a couple of sizes smaller than your hips. Yes, that can definitely be done. My recommendation, I find that two sizes is about all I want to grade between um, from my hips to my waist. Now, if that's still too big for your waist, you have darts to play with here. And I'm going to show you the waistband pieces here in a minute because um, you really don't even uh, fit the pants and the waist pieces are super easy to fit as you go. So if you need more taken out of the waist, my suggestion is just to make a deeper dart. That's usually kind of where you need it anyway, um, if you've got a, a bigger waist to hip uh, ratio, um, is taking it in from the smaller back. So that is my recommendation. Don't go more than two sizes. I mean, you could try, but I literally just pick, usually this um, notch at the hip is usually kind of marks um, your hip point. So I would go from the hip measurement that you need and then just use a um, French curve, not a French curve, a hip curve uh, to blend from one size into the next if I were going from a 14 to a 10. You could try going more sizes than that, but again, you can definitely pull quite a bit more in on your waist with the dart. Okay, if you do in fact go, let's say from a 10 to a four, or from a 14 to a 10 at the waist, or vice versa, whatever. I suggest whatever your waist measurement is, cut that here at the pocket. You don't wanna mess around with the pocket. The pocket piece is the same for all the sizes. So, um, well, I say that, not the pocket, the yoke. This is the yoke piece. So basically this is what makes the top piece of your pant um, and your pocket obviously is right here, but this is one this is the same for all of the sizes And it gets really confusing if you're trying to grade anywhere in this pocket place So my suggestion here is if you're needing the 14 and then you're wanting to go to a 10 To cut the 10 in the pocket and then do kind of a quick grade out to a 14 Here again, you have an inch seam allowance to play with um, here on the sides, so that's and that's across your side seams and your center back seam. So you're gonna be able to get some um, extra width for your hips here as well. Okay, I think that's it for hip. Also, I wanna talk about this pattern just a little bit more. There's the finished measurements. This pattern is just chock full of information. It even tells you that the two and a half inches of ease for um, above your body measurements is what they're doing here, which you could figure out by looking at the actual size chart versus what you've actually got here. Um, 
but here. For a 14, I have 38 inch hips. The 14 hip is 40, which is actually two inches of ease. I wonder why that is. I guess they mean for the average one, it'd be two and a half. But that's all I want for my pants, um, especially because I want it, these are a wide leg and I want them more fitted through the hips and then to flare out. So obviously more ease for the curvier fit. Okay, what else do I want to talk about here? Um, that may be it for our, sorry, my mind wanders. Um, alterations that I've made so far, I have, my legs are set in, and we'll talk more about this when we actually have the, it basted, and I'm going to talk about some common um, fitting as you go type things. I almost always have to take this seam right, this area right here um, on the um, inside leg in three eighths of an inch because my legs are set in from my hips. My hips don't flare out, so my legs aren't offset farther out on my hips. They are more set in. Um, so I have less space between my thighs, and that's that's skeletally. I have less space between my thighs. I mean, I also have less space between my thighs because of just my thighs, but my skeletal system, I would have less space between my thighs because of where my leg hip socket sits on my body. So I always have to take um, fabric out in between my legs and so I take 3 eighths out and I actually just cut it a 10 then went back out to a 14. Um, I always have to take it out on the front and the back um, just to get that excess fabric and again I'll talk more about that when we're fitting but I've made that adjustment to this pattern and then I have shortened it. I made these longer because I wanted to wear them with heels um, the first time I made them so I've already taken an inch out and then this is very rectangular down here. I mean not completely there is a little bit of a curve to the hem but I'm just shortening the hem by two inches because I needed that for my height because I do want this I like a 25 inch inseam when I have a crop pant, like a 7 8 pant. So that is all I've done to the main body pieces. So you're going to cut two out of each of those. And then you're going to cut out two of your front yoke. And again, this actually sits on top of your pocketing um, and goes back behind that pocket. So this gets cut out of your main fabric and you get two cut out of that. Oh. Sorry, my camera is going nuts here. Okay, this is your pocket facing, which will finish off your um, um, inside of your pocket. It does not say to interface this, but I interfaced mine last time, and I'm going to do it again because that's going to help that po um, pocket, especially if you have stretch in your fabric, but even if you don't, that pocket is cut. It's a slash pocket. It's cut on the bias. You don't want it stretching out um, because then you'll have like elephant ears sticking out at your hips, which nobody wants. So I always interface this piece, and it'll help stabilize that um cut pocket edge. So I'm going to cut two of fabric of this, of the main fabric, and then I'm also going to interface that piece. Then we've got your underlap, which this is part of the fly, um, and you just need to cut one of these. And then your fly, you can cut one of these of fabric and also one of interfacing. And then here's your brilliant little um, pattern pieces for your waist. So there's one inch seam allowances here. And again, the way these are sewn makes this so easy to fit as you go. Um, but you're just going to cut of each piece. Well, you have a left front waistband and a right front waistband, which is right here. So you're going to cut two of each of these and one of interfacing. And I'm just going to use a lightweight interfacing. And then the back, you're going to cut for a fabric because it's the right and left side of the back because there's also a center back seam um, which this is actually the way men's pants are made which is I don't know why women's pants aren't made this way more often it makes them super easy to alter later if your weight fl fluctuates and that kind of thing um, but you're going to cut four fabric of these and two of interfacing okay and then you have your pocket bags I love these pocket bags because <laughs> this goes all the way to the fly which effectively creates a pocket stay, like a tummy sucker inner, especially if you've got stretch in your um, fabric, any bubbling there on your lower tummy is gonna be masked by non-stretch pocketing, and I would highly recommend using non-stretch pocketing. I think I'm going to use, and then this is the other pocketing piece, use non-stretch pocketing and make sure you cannot see your pocketing through your fabric. Ask me how I know. <laughs> Ruined a pair of white jeans once, not even thinking about that. 
Um, so I do kind of want to use something with a pattern, but I'm not, I need to test it first to make sure that um, I can't see it through my pants because I don't want to be able to see. I was going to use scraps of the iCat um, fabric that I just made my 7357 top out of, but where I'm gonna, I need to check and make sure you can't see through the fabric first. So that's everything. So these two get cut out of whatever lining um, or pocketing that you use, and I would definitely use non-stretch for that. Um, you'll thank me later. And then the other things you're going to need are a 7-inch zipper, a flat button. This doesn't have to match anything because this is on the inside of your pants. If you look at her waistband right here, you'll see, maybe, that it has the overlap. Um, so you don't see the button. The button is actually going to be against your body. And then it closes with a pant or skirt hook and eye or hook and bar, which that's, they look like this. They're more heavy duty and you're going to want this kind. You can get them at Joann's. I buy mine in gross amounts um, from Wawak, but you'll need those. And that is it. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to cut out and interface all my necessary pieces and then I will uh, meet you at the sewing machine to start sewing. Okay, I just wanted to go over one more time all the pieces you need and what I have interfaced and what um, doesn't need to be interfaced, I guess. So I've got piece six here, which is the fly. I have um, one piece cut out, and for this one, you only cut out one, and it does need to, when you put this on the, the um, fabric, make sure that the fabric is right side up because you want it to look like this. You want it to be this orientation, not the other way around. So that is a little side note. I really had to think about that before I cut that one out, but it is interfaced. And I have used the, um, I'll put a link to it down below, and I'll put my friend Evelyn's email um, who sells the Palmer Pletch um, interfacing. And I believe she said if she had enough people that were ordering from her that she would cut us a, a little bit of a deal. Um, so anyway, I'll put her email down there too, but it's the Palmer Pletch, and this is the Perfect Fuse Shear. Um, I used it in my, um, oh, I guess, yeah, you guys haven't seen that. I used it in my Jessica blazer. It's amazing. Um, you guys haven't seen that yet. You will, <laughs> as soon as it goes up on Minerva Crafts. Okay, anyway, side note. Next, you've got your left front waistband, and you want to have two of those cut out, and one of those needs to be interfaced. The other one does not. So that is the left front, and I like to make those um, because you do have a left and a right, so I think about that because I want the interfaced piece to be the one that's on the outside that faces everybody, not the one that's on the inside because that's just the way I like it. All right, and then here's my right front. I've got two of those cut out. One's interfaced, one isn't, and then the back, wait, that's not the back, sorry. The back waistband piece 11 you're gonna have um, four of those cut out two will be interfaced um, and make sure they're mirrored pieces and then two won't be because again that's the waistband and for the facing hold on I like to keep because you have a left and a right and there is a difference I do like to keep my pattern pieces with my cut pieces on those as long as possible all right I had to use just plain old muslin for my pocket lining because you can see through this fabric so it's very boring um, which is also why I'm not going to do bias binding um, on the inside. I'm just going to surge, and I'll talk about that when we get to that point of the of the pattern. Um, but I mean, bias binding in muslin is just not very fun. <laughs> if I had a darker fabric where I could do a fun bias binding, I um, might have done that. But just the muslin because I don't want to be able to see through it. So I've got two of my front yoke in pocket, and I've got two of the pocket lining sorry so those are those two pieces and they just get cut out of the lining we're actually going to deal with those here pretty quickly um, and then I've got my pocket facing here and again this you cut two of these this one does not this is piece three it does not say to interface but I do so I interfaced both of those all with that perfect fuse um, here is the underlap this does not need to be interfaced so I didn't just one of those my front yoke, you do not need to interface these, but there are two of those, piece five. And then I've got two of my front and two of my back. So we are all ready to sew. So I'm just gonna go over here and we're gonna talk about the instructions we're gonna do first. Okay, so part one here on the instructions. These sewing directions are 
very thorough in my opinion, especially compared to other big four patterns. Um, so I would suggest reading through them even before you make the pants because they just are full of like some little tips and stuff. Um, it, it talks about here this note that there's going to be some basting, so to pay attention, uh, so you can assess fit as you go. Um, this has us, okay, we're going to stay stitch the top of the pant, and we are going to do that here in just a second. I'm actually going to sew my dart in the back first, and then sew my line of stay stitching. That also keeps your dart, like, make sure it's pressed to the right side and it's not moving around. But I'm not going to mess with the fly yet at all. I'm going to do my pockets and everything um, for each front, and then I'm going to go back and do the fly. So we're going to skip step two on this one, um, and I'm going to do a different way. I'm going to do my fly differently. And I also want to point out, typically in women's trousers, um, I'll talk about this more when I do the fly tutorial, typically women's trousers... Okay, I'm gonna I need to say this right. The overlap is to the right. So in jeans, your overlap is to is the left side overlaps the right. And that's how these pants have been drafted for whatever reason. I mean you could I guess you could technically do it whichever way you want. But I'm gonna do it the way that the pattern has you doing it. But it is typical that women's pants actually overlap the other way. Um, so if you made the like the closet case uh, Sasha trousers, they do it the correct way for women's trousers. So anyway, but we're going to do it the way that the pattern. So just don't be confused by that. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to sew my darts in my back, and I'm going to stay stitch the tops of my pants, and then we'll come back and put our slash pockets in. Okay, so I've got my fronts and my back stay stitched. And I stay stitch, if you can kind of see that, I stay stitch at three eighths of an inch or one centimeter. And you always want to go from the side seam to the center. So, um, yeah, this is the side seam actually, that's the, the pocket, this is the front. <laughs> so I sewed from this side to this side. So I've got both fronts and both backs. Um, show you the back uh, stay stitch and I have my darts sewn into my back and if I could find the back piece I wanted to show you as well good gracious I have the darts sewn in the back I press my darts to the center back because um, that just kind of fills it. I mean the bulk kind of goes into the hollow of your back a little bit and I just I find that looks a little nicer so yep both darts are sewn, pressed towards the center back, and then I've stay stitched three eighths of an inch along that waistline as well. Okay, so now we are going to skip along in the instructions because like I said, we're not gonna mess with the front fly at all at the moment. Um, and I'm gonna have a separate tutorial that I'll send you to here in a second on, good gracious, on how to do, on how to do the fly. All right, so I've got my front pieces. You are gonna need your front pieces and then you are going to need your pocket pieces so that is both your um, piece two which is the pocket lining pocket lining and you're going to need piece four which is your front yoke and pocket both of those are in muslin and then you're also going to need piece five that is your front yoke oops hold on grab grab too much you're gonna grab piece five which is your front yoke and you're gonna grab piece three which is your pocket facing okay so we're gonna do these slash pockets <laughs> all right first things first you are going to want, and I'm trying to see if they talk about it here. I don't think they talk about it here. Oh no, they do. Okay. All right. So what we're going to do is we are going to finish off. So this is my, um, I want to call these the right names, pocket facing. And we are going to finish off this longer edge. So this is literally just going to be placed on top of the pocket. Um, hold on, I want the correct name. <laughs> it's 
it's gonna literally be laid right on top of the pocket lining oops, and stitch down. Um, so there's a couple of ways you can do this. We're going to finish off this long edge on the pocket facing and we're also going to finish off the curved edge on the front yoke on all pieces. And they even have in here a tip on um, how you can apply bias binding for that. Which all you would do is so your bias binding, real thin bias binding, so I would say like, um, and you want, I mean it doesn't have to be double folded because you can make it double folded, uh, but I would say a half inch total width, so like maybe a little over an inch if you're making your own, um, because I would sew it right sides together at a quarter of an inch here, and then just flip it around to the back side, and then you can tuck it under and stitch, or, because, which is how you would typically attach bias binding. Because this is gonna get stitched down on top of another piece of fabric, because this is the pocket facing, and I'll show you how that's done here in a second, you could just sew right sides together, flip the bias binding um, over, press it really good, and then just tuck it around the edge and you know sew it down real neatly and leave the back raw, because this is gonna be completely encased in um, on top of the pocket lining. And the same you could do for this. I'm just gonna use a serger for mine. Not very fun, but again, you can see through my fabric and so I don't want any fun, I don't want a fun bias binding that you're not gonna be able to see. But my necktie bias binding tutorial, and I'm gonna leave a link to that video up here, would be a fantastic thing to do for this because you could also use it um, around the fly, which again, I'm just gonna use a serger for, for this pair, but you could use it around the fly and you could also use it for the waistband. So that's just a little tip. Um, again, I'm using a serger. So I'm just gonna serge, again, the longer edge of the pocket facing and the curved edge of the front yoke really quick and then we're going to attach them to the pockets. Okay, I was going to just show you a little up close um, for this. Okay, so we've got piece four here which is our front yoke and pocket and we are just going to take our front yoke here and wrong side, it's the wrong one, wrong side to right side, we're gonna, and you'll see it lines up beautifully. I am literally just going to sew at like three eighths or a quarter of an inch, whatever, um, basically basting all the way around here. And then when I get to this edge, I'm just gonna sew right within that serging line all the way down so that this front yoke is fixed to this uh, front yoke and pocket piece, which is the muslin. And then over here, you're gonna do the same thing. This is your pocket lining. And you're going to take, not that one, <laughs> this piece, same treatment. So it gets just placed right on top here. And you're just going to um, baste it basically within the seam allowance on these sides. And then when you get to this side, I just sew right within the serging line right there. So I'm going to do that really quick to both, um, or to all four, I guess, of these pocket pieces, and then we're going to attach them to the pants. All right, so now I have two, um, these need to be pressed. <laughs> Again, my pocket, the this does not have any stretch in it, and this does, um, so I need to just give that, and this has a lot of wool in it, so I just need to shrink that back up a little. Um, but I've got this piece, two of these mirrored pieces, and then I have two of these mirrored pieces. So we're actually going to use this one first. It gets sewn to the pants first. And this is the, um, hold on. I just wanna use correct terminology. Excuse my face here. This is the pocket lining. It has the pocket facing on the pocket lining. And we're gonna sew this one to the pants first. So, what you're gonna do, let's move those for a second, is you'll notice that this looks a lot like the front of the pant, and this is would be the pocket edge, which is exactly what it is. So we're going to sew, let me find the right front piece here. 
This is gonna get sewn right sides together to the front of your pants. So here is, this is the right side of one of the front of my pants. This is the pocket opening here. And then we've got the crotch curve right there. So we're just gonna sew this piece right along this curve. I have the wrong pant piece. Hold on. <laughs> right sides together, like so. So there's a notch right here in the pocket. So that's this is the pocket, and we are literally just gonna sew this pocket edge at 5 eighths of an inch, and then we are going to trim it and then understitch it, which understitch again is when you press, actually I press it at the very end, but it's when you sew the seam allowance to the inside. So the seam allowance will get sewn to the um, pocket and pocket facing side. So that's understitching for those who don't know. So I'm going to do that really quick on both sides and then I'll come back and show you what that looks like. Okay, so this is what it looks like from the front, and I'll show you the back in a second. So you can see, maybe, focus, there we go. <laughs> you can see that I've sewn the seam allowance down to the facing. So this, when it gets pressed, will lie nice and flat, and that is what your pocket opening will look like. So then on the back, you can see that I've got the trimmed seam allowance, and I've just sewn the seam allowance to the pocket and the pocket facing. I've done that on both sides. So I'm going to press the way it will be worn, like thus. And then I am going to baste my pieces together. So I'm just gonna sew within the seam allowance along the top, along the top, along the side here. Oh wait, I'm sorry. Don't do that, we haven't sewn the pocket. <laughs> we haven't sewn the pocket yet. Oh, goodness gracious. Okay, I'm just gonna go press this real quick and then I'm gonna come back and we're going to sew the other part of the pocket to this and then we will baste. <laughs> I'll be right back. All right, so this is what the um, back side of, um, the wrong side of one of the fronts looks like now. So we have this all pressed nice and neat. Our understitching is visible here on the wrong side so it'll never be visible from the front. And now we are going to take this piece, which is our, um, I think it's front pocket and yoke piece, and then our front yoke piece that we have, sorry, I've zoomed in so you can see this now, it's <laughs> this piece, and we are going to put it right sides together. Now, this is literally, or sorry, not right sides together, this is the right side of this pocket piece to the wrong side of the pant. And you are going to sew, match up notches, we're going to sew just this bottom part here all the way up into the curve, but leave the um, part that goes, that's actually here in the fly, this, this straight part right here, we'll leave that unsewn. So literally we're just sewing this seam right here. Now we could do this, you could do your pocket a French seam if you wanted to, you could do this with bias, you could finish off with bias binding. Again, I am just gonna do, I'm just gonna serge it. So I'm sewing right side of this to the wrong side of this. <laughs> Does that make sense? So I'm just gonna sew again this seam and then I'm gonna finish it with the serger and then um, I will come back and then we will do our basting. All right, so we've got pockets in, if you can see that. Um, one thing I wanna mention, when you are sewing, um, sorry, I've got one piece wrong side up and one piece right side up so you can see both. When you're sewing this pocket, make sure you're not sewing it to the front of the pant. I thought about that as I was sewing. Um, you just wanna be sewing um, the two pocket bag pieces together. 
Uh, then after you do that, you can give it a good press and then I have simply basted, well, maybe it's easier to see here. I've basted all the way across the top. I've basted right here, and by basting, I'm not pulling these stitches out. They're, I'm just sewing within the seam allowance. And then I've basted it down to the side seam um, here. So then the front piece will look like this. And again, we have our one inch seam allowances all the way down that we're gonna play with later. And now we're ready to put in the fly. So I am going to send you over to the fly tutorial that should have already gone up. Um, and then we'll be back tomorrow to finish these up, um, base them, address any fitting issues, and finish our pants. Hope you guys have enjoyed this, and I will see you tomorrow. Bye.